Thank you for joining us in this time of prayer as we focus on the unfolding situation in Afghanistan. It, it's been so harrowing to watch the news recently and see what's coming out of there and so hard for us to imagine the unbearable suffering that many face and, and the abject fear that they now live with. There's been an effort locally to do something practical, as there has been in, in many other parts of the country, to gather items for refugees who will arrive here with really nothing but the clothes they stand up in. And there are details in the description under this video of how you can do that in this area. But we also wanted to pause and pray together, so a few of us have compiled some reflections and music and prayers, and we invite you to join us in prayer for that troubled land. It seems there's always something in the world somewhere which is terrible and, and inflicting suffering on people, and it's always been so. The Old Testament prophets prove that by the fact that they proclaim the word of God against injustice and things that were happening. Prophets like Amos, who wrote in chapter 5, Seek good and not evil, that you may live, that the Lord, the God of hosts, may be with you as you claim he is. Hate evil and love good. Establish justice in the courts. Let justice flow on like a river and righteousness like a never-failing torrent. And so often the Psalms help us to give expression to that sense of lament and sorrow, but ultimately of confidence in God. So we begin with a version of one of the Psalms of Lament, Psalm 13, which asks the question on many lips, How long, O Lord, will you forget an answer to my prayer? How long, O oh Lord, will you forget an answer to my prayer? No tokens of your love I see, your face is turned away from me, I wrestle with despair. How long, O oh Lord, will you forsake and leave me in this way? When will you come to my relief? My heart is overwhelmed with grief by evil night and day. How long, O oh Lord, but you forgive with mercy from above. I find that all your ways are just. I learn to praise you and to trust in you. Another of the Old Testament prophets, Isaiah, declared in one of his great visions that things needn't be like this and that they won't be ultimately, that one day God's kingdom will come and that will be a kingdom of peace and justice and security. And we, as his people, are to walk in that way now. So he writes in that great passage in chapter 2, In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be set over all other mountains, raised high above the hills. All the nations will stream towards it, and many peoples will go and say, Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. He will judge between the nations, as arbiter among many peoples, 
They will beat their swords into mattocks and their spears into pruning knives. Nation will not lift sword against nation, nor ever again be trained for war. Come, people of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. A prayer for Afghanistan. O loving God, your hands have fashioned every lovely corner of this treasured planet, and the beautiful land of Afghanistan is as precious as every other place your children call home. By its rivers and mountains, its fields and gardens, its busy towns and ancient villages, it is the heart's desire of its people and the place where their lives and loves are nurtured. We grieve today with those who grieve over Afghanistan, the people who call it home indeed, the people exiled or suddenly having to leave, the men and women from other countries who have made sacrifices in recent years in the cause of that country's future. We remember with renewed sadness the loss of lives of military personnel and civilians during the years of this country's involvement in Afghanistan. Conscious of the questions that must today be troubling the minds of those in our community who were bereaved, those who were wounded in operations and those who were forever changed by experiences suffered there. We pray for peace for dignity, for freedom and confidence for the men, women and children of Afghanistan, for courage, vision and generosity within the international community responding to such need, and for tranquility of mind amongst our own service community and its wider family. In the name of Jesus Christ, the peace giver, we pray. Amen. O God of mercy and of peace, we hold before you the peoples of Afghanistan. Be living bread to those who are hungry each day. Be healing and wholeness to those who have no access to health care amidst the ravages of pandemic. Be their true home to all who have been displaced. Be open arms of loving acceptance to those who fear because of their gender, ethnicity, religious or political views. Be peace to those engaged in armed conflict and those who live within its shadow turn our hearts and minds to your ways of just and gentle peace. Open our eyes to see you in all acts of compassionate care. Strengthen our hearts to step out in solidarity with your suffering people and hold us all in your unfailing love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ who emptied himself of all but love in order to bring life in all its fullness. Amen. Father God, keeper of all of our hearts, sustainer of our hope and the light in our darkness, we pray for all of those grieving over events in Afghanistan the families of servicemen and civilians alike killed in recent days. We ask your comfort to surround them. We pray for those who remain trapped in Afghanistan and those who are or will become migrants and homeless in the coming months. We pray also for the politicians, diplomats and military commanders who have influence over this crisis, that you will give them a spirit of wisdom in these days. 
Make us all generous in these troubled times to be the heart of Christ in loving, offering and praying for all of those who are suffering. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who is with us always and whose faithfulness never fails us. Amen. We really struggle to understand cruelty and suffering in the world. But we hold to the promise that the day of the Lord will come and we pray for his kingdom to come quickly. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had vanished and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God made ready like a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice proclaiming from the throne, Now God has his dwelling with mankind. He will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There shall be an end to death and to mourning, and crying, and pain. For the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, I am making all things new. Write this down, he said, for these words are trustworthy and true. to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love. We only find in you, our God. For justice, for freedom, for mercy,
Lord of the nations, God of peace and love, in your hands are all the people of this world, one flesh, one blood, created by you. You alone, O God, can curb the passions that take us from you and turn us upon each other. You alone can save us from ourselves. Be with us now, O Lord, and hear our prayer for peace. Almighty God, you lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth, from despair to hope, from fear to trust, from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, Afghanistan, our world, our universe. Amen. <laughs> 